blue torch at my eyes, pour acid down my throat, strip the tissue from my lungs, drown me in my blood, choke my baby to death in front of me, make me watch her struggle as she dies, cripple my children, let pain be their daily and only playmate, spare me nothing, wreck my health so I can no longer feed my family. Watch us starve. Say it has nothing to do with you. Don't ever say sorry. Poison our water, cause monsters to be born amongst us, make us curse God, stunt our living children's growth for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Ignore our cries. Teach me that my rage is as useless as my tears. You are a wealthy American corporation and I am a gas victim of Bhopal. The mother stands with her two children in front of the Union Carbide gates in Bhopal. This sculpture was made by Ruth Waterman Kupfa Schmidt and Shonzo Mitra. Ruth and Peter Waterman had come to Bhopal and were working with the activists and survivors of the gas tragedy in 1984. Mamta was just six years old when she got separated from her mother who was running, holding her youngest child. The baby died in her arms and she died too. Amta did not have a mother. Ruth Waterman, a Dutch artist and a Holocaust survivor who had lost her parents in Hitler's gas chambers, had met Mamta. The vivid memories of the traumatic night of the disaster recounted by survivors shaped the design of the sculpture and the survivors also helped to build it. The statue carries the message, no more Bhopal, no more Hiroshima. Only a group of nine, top of a group of nine. Hm, hm, hm. Actually, sculpture, to sculpture, to put a conceptualized up there, do you next on the correctly? What in the Kay, actually, do you know Mamido? Actually, I would a tito, would it, would it, 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 क्षमता <laughs> কিন্তু আরেকটা যে মানে সে মার ছাড়া তার কোনো এ নেই আশ্রয় নেই বলে সে মার পেছন পেছন দৌড়ছিল কিন্তু সেই এই বাচ্চাটি কি মৃত যাকে কোলে রেখেছে হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ সেই but a বিভিন্ন এর বিশেষ করে বাচ্চাদের নিয়ে দুটো ওয়ার্কশপ হয়েছিল তারা যার যে যার মত গল্প বলেছিল এবং তারা সেই রাত সম্পর্কে যা মনে আছে ছবি আছে এ এঁকেছিল হুম কার্ডও করা হয়েছিল হুম হুম তার মধ্যে থেকে এই মানে এই গল্পটা আর কি এইটা একটা স্টোরি বেরি আসে হুম হুম To 
Towards the end of her life, Ruth Waterman had developed symptoms of Parkinson's disease. She began receiving medication and for many years continued to live an independent life. I met her in The Hague in 2010. My name is Moshumi and uh, she was a friend of my friends. And uh, Shonjaida and later my friend Onirban Dashgupta, who used to work in, uh, in The Hague, who used to teach there, he took me to Ruth's house, and it was uh, it was really an amazing house where we met. But by then she was quite um, disabled, and she was forgetting things as well. Her son uh, Daniel has said in an interview that um, her identification with the people of Bhopal and the disaster that unfolded there remained very strong. Unfortunately, her personal life story and her feelings about Bhopal were sometimes confused, possibly because of her Parkinson's. Emotionally and on an ethical level, the, this confusion seems both inevitable and logical. My grandparents, Daniel says, uh, were transported to Auschwitz and gassed. The political ideology and technology that led to the death of my grandparents is in many ways the same as that which puts profit before people today. So, aside from the deep sense of empathy my mother felt for the people of Bhopal, there is a sense in which my mother's failure to distinguish between the innocent victims of the Nazis and victims of the Bhopal gas disaster transcends the superficial and points to a more timeless ethical principle. War, ruthless profiteering, and uh, the victims among the Earth's most vulnerable people are all part of a larger systemic problem. Ruth Waterman was a signatory to a petition by Jewish survivors and descendants of survivors of the Nazi genocide, in which they unequivocally condemned the massacre of Palestinians in Gaza. We must raise our collective voices and use our collective power to bring about an end to all forms of racism, including the ongoing genocide of Palestinian people. We call for an immediate end to the siege against the blockade of Gaza, they wrote. Never again must mean never again for anyone. So, having made friends with the children of Bhopal and uh, seeing her own reflection in their lives, uh, Ruth uh, wrote a story uh, which was called The Village of the Scented Tomatoes. She wrote in Dutch and translated into English. I'm not sure if the English ever um, came out. When we met in uh, 2010, we talked about uh, doing a Bangla version of the book, which has not yet happened, and I'm not sure if the English also came out. Um, so this is a story about Monoharpur, a little village, and Monoharpur is a bit of Bengal and a bit of other places, and the children are, uh, are the people whom uh, Ruth knew, so it's the, there's Mamta, there is Sunil, who is also Satyu, who is an activist because he loves to run. And there is Vishnu, who is a very good listener. And Mamta is a great mimic and she's great fun. 
So um, these children, they um, they live in this village where there are tiny tomatoes uh, which grow and uh, which are small and they you can have one at a time and they melt in the mouth and the people would um, trade them for other things as well as just have them uh, and keep the seeds uh, for the next um, crop. And there were three women uh, who, uh, three women who looked like old women, but they were wise and they knew about the earth and the sky and water and rain and uh, winter and cold. And these women, uh, they guarded the tomatoes. And there's a village square uh, with a toothbrush tree in which, um, uh, where people gathered, children held their meetings and decided how to protect the tomatoes from the cold and uh, decided how they would make these uh, blankets uh, from cobweb. And uh, so they made all these plans in the village and they chatted in the village square. And uh, it was beautiful. Uh, it was beautiful. Mamta could uh, uh, could mimic the buffalo and the birds and the people and make everybody laugh. And when the stars were pinned up on their places in the sky, the day squirrel hopped into the night. Sometimes the children in their sleep could feel its tail sweeping their faces. Or was it uh, the gecko who bumped into their toes and tickled their feet? You could hear the children's laughter in their dreams, but maybe they dreamt of the ice cream man. On the most beautiful days of the summer, when the sun was boiling over, the, the ice cream man would come. He'd sit down under the toothbrush tree, pick up a branch of the tree and start cleaning his teeth. As soon as the people came up to him, he exchanged his ice for little tomatoes. And so it went. The river flowed down from the from the mountain top, and uh, uh, flowed so fast. And uh, Sunil or Sadhu tried to run, and um, tried to run faster than the river, but couldn't. And that's how it went till a man, till a man arrived in a silver car with a golden umbrella and with lots of machines and his name was Mr. Clever Treasure, sometimes called uh, by mistake he's called um, Treasure Clever and sometimes just because people feel angry with him because of what he does later. So he's called other names too. And he meets the cup squeezer, he meets, um, he meets Mamta first and and she gives him a tomato and he says, why do, why do you have these stupidly small tomatoes? And we must, you should have bigger ones and that you will um, be able to sell and make lots of money. And then um, I like big, big uh, is more handy than little. I don't understand why the tomatoes are so, so little. And... Uh, uh, Mamta says, uh, Mamta says, uh, we like things to be small and we, well, because uh, we have uh, to have one tomato at a time in our mouth, we grow them like that on purpose. It's the secret of the, of the old women of the village. And then, uh, but he has other plans, Mr. Clever Treasure. And uh, then he makes a concoc he makes a con concoction and um, spreads that on the tomatoes in the middle of the night, and that's a sticky, sweet, very very sweet, sticky, many coloured thing that he pours on the tomatoes, and in the morning they become huge and big, as big as football, and people are divided. Some like the tomatoes big and some think, no, it should not be like this. 
and then the the flies come like locusts they come and then there's a huge storm the women they say that something bad is going to happen now the river uh, uh, runs dry it starts flowing up to the mountain it it starts flowing in the reverse direction and um and and everything is turned um upside down and everything is destroyed in the village and then this man runs away he runs away but uh, and there's an earthquake and then and then everything starts from scratch again everything starts again that is uh, the story that she writes and um it's a very beautiful story and uh, so this is also roots story and um on the wall um opposite the statue of the mother with the two children there is a poem that's written and the poem is by Seema Sini and uh, the poem the lines are history says don't hope on this side of the grave but then once in a lifetime the longed for tidal wave of justice can rise up and hope and history rhyme এখনো দেখিনি শুধু ঘিরে রেখেছি শরীর দিয়ে তুই আমার অস্ফুট গান আমার রক্তে তোর স্পন্দন নিঃশ্বাসে শ্বাস নিস তুই তোকে আমি একটু একটু করে লিখি রোজ আমি তোকে আগলিয়ে রাখি জঠরে মাটির গভরে নরম নরম ঘুম বুলিয়ে দি চোখে গান দিয়ে যাই কানে কানে তুই ভয় পাস না এই তো আমি আছি তুই ভয় পাস না জানি যুদ্ধ লেগেছে জানি বাইরে আগুন জানি মৃত্যুর ছায়া জানি নদী মরে গেছে জানি যুদ্ধ লেগেছে জানি বাইরে আগুন জানি মৃত্যুর ছায়া জানি নদী মরে গেছে তাই 